I joined Our Sisters because I was really impressed with their, their joyfulness. They really seemed to be happy in what they were doing. They were committed to God and to help other people, and I wanted to be part of that. I had these sisters, the Sisters of Charity in Hal of Halifax, in grammar school at Our Lady Help of Christians in Flatbush. They were very a uh, happy group of women. They happen to be on the younger side, many of them. I think I observed a love of God that they seemed to have. I think by the end of grammar school, I thought this might be where I was being called. I joined the Sisters of Charity in 1980 after I had finished my degree in social work. What drew me to the community was their commitment to the poor. They had just finished a general chapter and made a specific commitment to accompany the economically poor. And I felt at that point my faith being lived out, faith in action, being with people, uh, helping people to become fully human. I was 18 when I entered the Sisters of Charity of Halifax and went up to Halifax, Nova Scotia. I think I was very naive as to what I was committing myself to. But over the years, through instruction, through education, I learned what it meant to be a Sister of Charity through the example of other sisters, through the conferences that we had in formation when I was up in Halifax. Our congregation, the Sisters of Charity of Halifax, were founded by Mother Elizabeth Ann Seton. She started the congregation in Emmitsburg, Maryland, and from there, sisters from Emmitsburg went to New York. From New York, they went to Halifax, Nova Scotia in 1849. When her husband died, she had to then make a living to earn money to pay expenses for her family. She was invited down to Baltimore, Maryland and set up a school which was considered the first Catholic school in Baltimore and then she was given property in Emmitsburg, Maryland. From there, sisters from Emmitsburg went to New York. From New York, they went to Halifax, Nova Scotia in 1849. So that's my congregation, Sisters of Charity of St. Vincent de Paul, Halifax. We come from the Sisters of Charity of New York, with their cousins, kind of. So we were sent up to uh, Halifax to, to minister and then eventually became our own congregation. That was the beginning of our order with four sisters. I think when I entered in 1963, we had 1,800 sisters. So it grew to that, just in that community and all of the other communities that Elizabeth Seaton is credited with have also grown. She was a wife, mother of five children, and she initially was an Episcopalian and converted to Catholicism. She was born in the 1700s. She did an amazing amount in a short time. She died when she was in her early 40s. To realize what people did in such a short time is amazing, I think. St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, as we know, who is the first native-born American saint and a New Yorker, so this is a great way to celebrate her being in New York and Brooklyn. St. Vincent de Paul, also we, she learned from him, although he had lived long before her, but carried on the same kind of work, working with the people, especially helping those who were less fortunate. She was involved with teaching. She had to support her family. So we carry on the spirit of Elizabeth and Vincent, who had particular gifts to bring to the people of God. Concern for the poor, educating people, responsive to those on the margins of society. So that's how we live out that spirit today. I don't think she was involved with health care and such, but as the other Sisters of Charity have founded and developed, it was education, health care, social work, child care institutions. Those were the main uh, works of our communities. Today, there is a museum dedicated to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, showing her life, her family, her ministry, and all the congregations that have come forth from St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Well, our charism is to give joyful witness to the love of God by serving those in need. The charism really is what the spirit is of the founders, because charism gets confusing. What is that? People don't know that word. It's a kind of an in in word for religious, but really it's the, the spirit of the congregation. What is the message that St. Vincent de Paul and St. Elizabeth Ann Seton gave to the community 
to carry on. And we do that in various ways, through education, through parish ministry, through social work, through volunteer services to organizations that provide service to the poor. Responsive to those on the margins of society. So that's how we live out that spirit today. The charism of the Sisters of Charity is really to show forth God's love. It's a beautiful charism. I feel I have been blessed with the gift of love. I came from a very loving family and I I feel I have a very strong gift of love that I share in many ways, in small ways. To show forth God's love in whatever ways we can, greeting people, smiling at people, helping them in whatever ways, knowing their names. I try to learn the people's names here at St. John's. I think it's so important that you're somebody, you know, and for some of these people there, I don't think they feel like they are. We're Sisters of Charity. Our, our motto is God is love. I think more than any Thing, it's that each of us has an inherent dignity, especially the poor, those who are suffering, those who are on the margins, that our charism says that we bring God's joyful witness to love, and we do that with everybody, uh, but most especially for those who are really trying to um, rise and become the human person that they're supposed to be. So I think the sisters today no matter what they do, whether they're in education or whether they're in social services or pastoral care or working in church community, that's what they desire, that each person becomes more fully alive as a human person. We have specifically said that we will live charity each day because it matters. People are always in need of God's love, of experiencing that through others who care for them in a very positive manner. So I think it continues to be a, a real need in our world today. We live in a very violent society and whenever we have the opportunity to show love, care, acceptance of another person, we can break that cycle of violence and just be more accepting of people. I think it's important today, especially in Brooklyn, because we're seeing this is like the cool borough now. This is the place where everybody wants to be, which is great, uh, but we're seeing that it's becoming focused on wealth. Just in this neighborhood, Bedford-Stuyvesant, which is historically African-American, people who have worked their whole lives are being uh, priced out out of their neighborhood. The connection there for the charism is that we have to find ways where people can come together and be respected and be provided the basic needs of life. We have so much diversity here in New York and to help people feel welcome, to help them feel that they belong, to uh, acknowledge them as individuals, that I think to be able to show forth God's love is, it's absolutely necessary, but it's quite a privilege also to be able to do that. People need other people. People need to be accepted. People need to show that someone cares about them. And we very definitely want to show people that we do care about them. What I do here at St. John's Bread and Life is teach a crocheting and knitting group. Every Wednesday we meet from 12 to 1.15 and we have about 25 people who come fairly regularly. The group members help one another as they learn, so it's a really uh, wonderful endeavor. Besides here, I'm volunteering at a boys' school, De La Salle School, and uh, Freeport, Long Island. I tutor there once a week. I'm retired from teaching and social work, so I have this kind of flexibility of time to do volunteer work. I'm also part of the Lifeway Network Corporation. It was founded by one of our sisters, Sister Joan Dorber, and it's to help people who have been trafficked, and I'm on the corporation of that group. I was a teacher initially, and uh, even when I was in Nova Scotia, because I had my college degree, I did some teaching there before I came to New York. When I was in formation, I did some teaching. I worked in a couple of parishes in the Brooklyn Diocese. I worked in a couple of parishes out on Long Island. Then I was asked to be on a leadership team in Massachusetts at our retirement home with our retired sisters. And uh, after that, I retired. And I've been doing volunteer work at various places, one of which is right where we are here today at St. John's Bread and Life. It's a wonderful community spirit here. I'm very happy to have the opportunity to 
minister here? I have been in various ministries over the course of the past 50 years. I have been an educator, teacher in an elementary school. I have been a social worker for a foster care agency as well as for Catholic Charities in Brooklyn and Queens. And I also have worked in a couple of parishes as a director of religious education and the past 12 years in parishes as a pastoral associate. And in that role, I worked with elderly people, providing services to them, bringing them together for social events, and then also um, the right of Christian initiation of adults, bringing interested people into the Catholic Church through instruction, experiences of the Catholic Church, and then through the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. I think what we offer the world is a, a sense of hope that there is something larger than the everyday crises people go through, that they're to be part of something larger than ourselves, to help people help one another by by practically taking care of people's needs. You know, you use the crocheting group as if, for instance, we come together, people have now, they're assisting one another, and it's a very calm kind of place. It's really a wonderful experience for people. Looking at my years of service, uh, before I became chaplain here, I've been a social worker for many, many years in a variety of agencies. So that aspect of being involved with people is, is very important to me. I think the greatest gift I'm feeling right now is the gift of humility to be here, to be with people who take me for who I am and I hopefully do the same. It's a tremendous gift that we give one another. To be in this setting, I just find it's a humbling experience to accompany other people in whatever they need. And it's also humbling to know that the people coming into this soup kitchen bring tremendous gifts. It's not a one-way street here. We give and take to one another. I have just completed a Golden Jubilee celebration. There were eight of us who entered in 1963 were professed in 1966, and this summer celebrated our Golden Jubilee, 50 years of commitment as Sisters of Charity of Halifax. It has been a wonderful opportunity, a time to look back on the, these 50 years, and to look forward to years to come and volunteer in all these different ways that we are called upon to volunteer. Well, for most of my life, I have been part of this community. I just celebrated my Golden Jubilee as a Sister of Charity. I entered in 1963, and I've been a sister for 53 years. I've been in the community for 53 years, but we count from our profession was 1966, so it's 50 years ago that I profess vows as a Sister of Charity, and I've never regretted it. I really. Uh, I feel this is where I was meant to be. I've been to different places, but mostly in New York. Over the past 50 years, all the ministries I've been involved in have had some degree of reward. The people that I've encountered on this journey of 50 years have been just wonderful, wonderful people. Being at St. John's Bread and Life, being in ministry here, um, that I have an embarrassment of riches as every time I come through the door, that the people who come here for services give to me uh, such respect and love and care that hopefully they also receive here. So the mutuality, that we're doing this together, that this is not something that the sisters give like we are the Lady Bountifuls, but there's a relationship with the people. And that's a tremendous uh, and gratifying experience to be here. I think young people would be attracted to the congregation of the Sisters of Charity of Halifax because of the various ministries we are presently involved in. The appeal is the same that it's been always in the sense of a person who's interested in serving others, has a desire to commit herself to God, make that total commitment, I think that's like a universal kind of appeal. So if somebody were interested in, in that kind of commitment, they might be interested in religious life. Young people today have a great desire for service. That's my experience anyway. Uh, we work with a lot of young people here at the soup kitchen who come in to volunteer. 
and they could choose other places to be, but they come here because to be of service is, is very important. And we have an outlet here for them to come and to be with those who are in need. There are ways that people could be connected with us in the various ministries that we're involved in, and I would certainly encourage people to do that. We also have an associate program for people who are not sisters, but they feel they have that charism of God's love that they want to share. I think we can just be a presence and for people today, the young people today, that will speak volumes. Thank you.